around the world, you realize that these other temples have a lot in common. That is, they're all very, very difficult to explain <laughs> with vine ropes, copper tools, no pulley, and so on. One Egyptologist, the director of the Giza, Pla the Giza Plateau, said, there is not one grain of evidence of any advanced civilization ever having been in Egypt prior to the Egyptian. And I thought that was one of the most accurate statements I ever heard from an archaeologist. Because if you're looking for grains of evidence of sand, you will miss it. If you're looking, if you got your head in the sand, you will miss it. But if you look up from the sand and stop looking for grains of evidence, you will see millions of tons of rocks right in front of your eyes giving you some pretty damn good evidence. Okay? The Grand Pyramid of Giza is made of 2,300,000 stones. 2,300,000 stones. It stands at 481 feet of altitude. Its base is 13 square feet, uh, 13 square ac acres, 13 square acres, that is extremely large. When you take survey picture, satellite picture of the apex of the Grand Pyramid at Giza, it is one quarter of an inch off the center of the base, that's 13 square acres. 13 acres square. One quarter of an inch off center. That's after placing 2,300,000 stones that you have cut with copper tools. <laughs> yeah, you need some pretty good moonshine to do that one. But I guarantee you, that is extremely difficult to reproduce. In fact, there is no way engineering companies on this planet could ever reproduce that. Even with all of our modern technology, if we give them billions and billions of dollars, they couldn't come up with anything like that. Because if you cut, if you divide a quarter of an inch error by 2,300,000 stones, the accuracy at which you're placing these stones is outrageous. And we can't do anything like that. Our most accurate buildings like um, telescopes are not that accurate. They're not even close to having that kind of accuracy. Go ahead. So you could say we've just barely come out of the dark age. Basically, or we got into the Dark Ages. Yeah. Because we, it seems that there was people that were doing a heck of a lot better than us. Sorry. <laughs> um, so what I'm, when I was looking at this, I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't happen that way. If you, if you know, why is it that we think, you know, that this is taught as facts to children in schools every day, that the pyramids were built by people pulling on vine ropes? <laughs> and you know why? Because in the 1800s, a bunch of Eng English archaeologists showed up in Egypt and that's the only thing they could come up with. And because they had PhDs and they were very respected archaeologists, since then, everybody is repeating the same thing. And somehow, a theory that's completely unproven became a fact. 
In fact, you will not get a PhD in archaeology if you say anything else about the pyramids. I guarantee you that. You cannot get a PhD in archaeology by saying the pyramids were built by little green man. <laughs> this is one of the problems with education. A whole bunch of people repeating what they've all been taught doesn't advance the field very rapidly. Because everybody is repeating the same thing. You're not going anywhere. So, uh, you know, but they, these archaeologists never actually, you know, I, I, I know they're not mathematicians, but this is simple mathematics, okay? You take the number of stones, they tell you that the pyramids had to be built in 20 years, okay? So that the dynastic Egypt worked. And then you calculate how fast they had to put the stones in. At, at seven days a week, 10 hours a day, 365 days a year, for 20 years, they had to place the stone every two minutes to finish the pyramid on time. With that level of accuracy. Never mind. But then the archaeologists say, no, oh no, those were farmers. They could only build the pyramids during the time of the flood of the Nile when they couldn't work in the fields three months out of the year. <laughs> See, when they had that three months vacation, hey, let's all go and build a huge pyramid. <laughs> so they went out there and built pyramids three months out of the year. You redo your calculation, now they have to place a rock every two seconds to make it in 20 years. So that really doesn't work. Um, because it's not like you can take these huge rocks and average two tons, some of them up to 40 tons rock. Like in the King's Chamber, there's a hundred slab of 40 ton pink granite rock, okay? These things at 135 feet of elevation in the pyramid. It's not like you go, hey Joe, catch this one. Hey Joe, catch this one, you know? And the other guy on the other end is like putting them in. You can't do that. And it doesn't matter if you got a hundred thousand people. You still can't do it. And if and and you know they tell you they did that by rolling the rocks on logs. Well they might have not noticed, but these pyramids are in the middle of a desert. You need a lot of logs to move 2,300,000 stone. Where did the wood come from? When you ask them that, they say, oh, they imported it from Europe. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Was this like some catalog, you know, 1-800 ordering? Because like, as far as I know, the Egyptian didn't like you know, easily navigated into Europe, cut millions of logs they would have needed, and brought them back. There's no evidence of that. So, uh, but, but even more fundamental, I'll ask you, you know, even more fundamental, the fundamental axioms of archaeology is that you observe and uh, decode the remains of a civilization to understand its morse, morses and its, its, you know, its, its activities and all this, right? Oh, there is over a million aeroglyph walls in Egypt. Mm -hmm thousands and thousands of aeroglyph walls in Egypt. In the temples, in the tombs, everywhere. They tell us how they made love, they tell us how they eat, they tell us how they went to the washroom, they tell us everything about their life, everything. 
not one of those walls mentioned building the pyramids. What? They forgot? <laughs> You're talking about something that would have taken a huge effort. You think they would have put at least a little wall somewhere saying, oh, by the way, we built the pyramids. <laughs> no. None of that. In fact, the archaeologists say not only that the pyramids built, uh, that the Egyptians built the pyramids, but they say that they built them as tombs. Okay. What's the evidence? Zero. Zilch. Not one, pyr not one pyramid was ever found to host a mummy. Not one mummy was ever found in a pyramid. Not one. And I'm not just talking about Egypt. I'm talking about all around the world. And it's funny because you know how they do all these like historic, you know, history channel and all this stuff. You know, they have all these nice documentary. And they show you where they found the pyramids and the, you know, and the, and the tombs and all this and Tutankhamen and all this. And then they splice and they cut directly into the pyramids. So you think the mummies were found in the pyramids. But in fact, the mummies were found, most of the king's mummies were found in the king's valley, far from the pyramids. Some of the pyramids, they had to dynamite their way into the pyramid. They couldn't find an entrance. When they got inside the pyramid, there was the sarcophagus, the so-called sarcophagus in the middle. It had a slab. Some of them had slabs that were like 40 tons slabs sealing the sarcophagus. They would unseal it, pull the slab off, still no mummy. What was their conclusions? Grave robber. <laughs> Those grave robbers, they were unbelievable. They, they just walked through the walls because they had to dynamite their way in. So the, those grave robbers got there before. They must have walked through the walls, got in there, picked up the 40-ton slab on top of the sarcophagus, pulled all the stuff out, including all the bones and everything else, which, you know, wonder what they would do with, and then, you know, closed it back up, resealed it, right, just to make sure they didn't disturb anything, and then <laughs> walked back out with all of this stuff. This doesn't make sense. Now, there's other things that don't make sense. There is nowhere on these pyramids that it says, I built this for my tomb. I was born then and I died then. You think if you built such a great monument, at least you put your name on it. <laughs> you know, that's all logical. Pyramids were not tombs. Pyramids were not built by Egyptians. No Egyptian text talks about the Egyptian building the pyramids. The texts do talk about monuments, enormous monuments being built. And who they say built them was the sun gods. The Mayans, the Incas, the Chinese, the Japanese, all cultures that have these buildings, none of them say we built it. All of them say the sun gods taught us how to build, how to talk, how to write, how to do all this stuff. Go ahead. There's no hieroglyphs inside the pyramid. And Lord knows that the Egyptians put hieroglyphs everywhere. So why didn't they not write inside the pyramids? You know? So those are all huge contradiction to the concept that the Egyptians 
or the Mayans or the Incas or the Chinese or so on build their pyramids. See what I'm saying? 